Hello friends, my name is Shivam from DevOps Schools and I will help you to enable your learning process in various technologies of DevOps, artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data and many more. This is our initiative to help you by sharing multiple tutorials and videos. And if you want any specific tutorials or any particular topic, then please do comment in the below comment section and I will help you with it. Also, please subscribe to our premium services on YouTube which will give you access to more content and videos to enhance your knowledge about all these topics. Also, if you want me to help you with regards to the online trainings and classroom sessions by our qualified trainers, then do please do write me at uh, contact at devopsschool.com. Thank you. Yeah, so let's understand the Splunk configuration file. Okay. Now, what is Splunk configuration file? So here, Splunk configuration file govern almost every aspects of how Splunk behaves. Yes, that's true. So anything you want to change, anything you want to change uh, in terms of behavior of Ansible, some of the default setting you want to override it, some of the additional features you want to add in. So anything you want to do, uh, you have to change that configuration file sometimes the configuration file is being changed through the ui uh, graphical user interface the one which we've been using search head and most of the time we change the configuration file through manually or through some deployment tool like a deployment server or ansible or something like that okay so configuration files are like a linux like a but it can be used in windows ending with nconf yeah so these configuration files are like are linux like but you can use in the windows also and the file name will become a conf.com and in the configuration file is a multi-layered content now the question is what is a multi-layered so look at this structure here where you can find the configuration file so this is the hierarchies of uh, Splunk Home, and typically you will find many directories, uh, subdirectories under the Splunk Home. But uh, most important one is etc. Remember uh, the Splunk scripts you will find in the bin folder, and the index which you find in the var lib Splunk. So now etc is very important, and etc content licenses and configuration file. So these are the information. ETC have it. Now ETC has a multiple sub directory, but these three directories are important: system, apps, and user. So inside the ETC, there is one directory called system, and there is one sub directory called apps and user. Now this is the location where you can copy the con configuration file. So under the system we can copy under the apps uh, under the apps again multiple apps are there okay search is one of the app which you've been using launcher is another app and many other apps you can install from the splunk base also so those are the apps you can use it so yep under the apps you have app and user user is like uh, like admin user or any users which you have created day for yesterday so same same user so inside the users directory there will be one name of this user and inside that configuration file will be stored. So at a, at a high level, configuration file is being stored at the three places, uh, system, apps, and user. Let me show you first before moving further. Okay, so here, go to C drive, and program files. This is I'm showing on the Windows, okay? Something similar we have in the Linux also. Now, this is the place which I was showing you, we have executable. This is a file of uh, Splunk software, Python 3.7, 2.7 also, and share and var. This is the place var you have an index var and lib Splunk. Here you have a see here all these indexes you have. So these are the indexes which is default indexes. I have not created any in the Windows actually, so none of this has come from me. Okay. This is the internal one. Okay, audit db and also there. Okay, so I was talking about this etc directory. You see here, etc have a multiple directory structure. 
inside that you have to only focus on three places which are those places apps system user so system basically as its name suggests system for the splunk system that means you want to copy the configuration file for the entire systems you you can you can copy it here okay so you can copy it here now if you want to copy some configuration file for specific apps these are the apps which got installed by default i'm not installed any app out of which we are using this one right search search we are using this one okay and monitoring console we will use today so yeah these are the apps inside the app let's say search also you can use uh, you can copy the configuration file understand that apps inside the search app inside the configuration file can be there now inside the etc there is one more directory which is called admin user inside that admin is a user which we i created default user and inside that also you can store that configuration file so overall we got to know there are three places where we store the configuration file okay now understand what is a configuration file using configuration file you can change the behavior of a splunk many settings it can be changed over the period of time i'll talk about uh, those other things yeah so guys did you understand so far any questions um yeah one question so um the one which we are seeing is related to splunk uh, th that we have installed okay normal enterprise splunk so um, in splunk we have around you know splunk forwarders universal forwarders um splunk indexer server then deployment server and we have splunk um, dedicated server for search kit and many things are there right so the configuration yeah. files would be changing for all those things or are the overall layout is going to be the same irrespective of the type that we install except the universal forwarder no matter whether it's a deployment server or deployment uh have a forwarder or uh, indexer or headers the configuration layout will be the same in the splunk uh, universal forwarder it's a different software altogether and uh, the skeleton will change more or less the skeleton inside that will remain same but at a high level the skeleton will change because splunk universal forwarder is not a a complete copy of splunk software whereas the deployment server uh, search head uh, it was uh, heavy forwarder are indexer are a complete software as splunk so that way now what are the differences between all those i'll, I'll just come back to those points this is the next topic anyways we have discussed oh okay 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 and and one more question is um in uh, in our yesterday's class we discussed right that index uh, indexers we have a main indexer that's a default one and we can create our own indexers so and where those index related data would be stored that you have shown uh, it's it would be a where lib splunk indexes and also yeah. we have system based indexes right um, underscore audit underscore internal and those things are system based internal indexes right so yeah. th those also would be stored under the same place or anywhere else yeah. every every indexes either if you want to see here uh, this is the the one which i showed you this is the default location for the indexes okay you can override that and store that in a other ways also so this is the default location for the indexes okay so any indexes you see here, internal audit and all here it is audit audit tv default dv this is this content main here default dv this content main okay okay so okay this is everything will be stored yeah. as long as you are not changing the path if you want to change the indexing this path let's say you don't like it so what do you do what do you need to do you have to change the configuration file because this is the default path in the indexer to store all the indexes so use the configuration file which i'm talking about right now you can change the path also okay yeah, thanks yeah just give me guys 20 seconds i'll just be back So yeah, so this is the skeleton where the configuration file gets stored. Remember, there are three places where this configuration file will be stored. One is system, one is uh, apps, and one is user. Now you must be wondering, and under that apps also depends on the number of apps you will have to self find out. Under the users also you can have. So here what we are trying to understand, uh, you can modify the Splunk at every stage you can modify the splunk behavior at the system 
uh, label also you can modify the different different behavior for the different different app also and you can define you can define the different different behavior for different kind of users also okay so that way you understand this image now let's look at this here this image uh, so you have a etc system and etc my apps inside of my apps you have a different different apps which include search now inside that you will have a two directory under the system uh, directory uh, or any application or user also you'll have a two directory one is called default and second one is called local okay one is called default second one is called local so here you have the default image is not been displayed but you will find it default which will contain the uh, the default configuration file and the local so now you must be wondering okay fine you can declare the properties file inside a system local system default search uh, local search default users local user default so precedence and all these things how it will be decided so I'll, I'll come back to this but here i am showing you where and all you can define the configurations of the slang okay so inside that local you will have a prop.conf input.com so here this is a windows skeleton so you have a con direct file okay if you have a linux style then you will have a different uh, dot con fill on with that okay so that's a thing so now i want to show you that before moving further so see here this is long etc here i'll go to the system and see here is the default the one which i was talking about the local local is the image and now see the different different configuration file okay uh, distributed search authentication event types input server.conf and this one this can be long list also not all files is here okay it's the one with and now again go to the default you see here so here you see it's so many files because these are the default settings which has been applied to the splunk when you install and start the splunk you can modify again by modifying in the local okay I'll talk about the precedence and priorities a little bit later. Okay, so inside the system also you'll find the two directory local and default. Inside the app also you'll find a system local and default. Inside the user directory also you'll find a system and local. Again, if you do not find it, you can also create it. That's that's also there. For example, here you have a users admin and see here there's a application. So these are the applications launcher applications search application. So if you go here see a local is the default is not there's no problem you can create it if you want it so like that so it depends on the need of this one uh, user default is not needed because you set set at the system level many times so yes this is the skeleton you will see that look at this first one etc app app name default local etc system default local etc user username app name and the local here it can be default but typically we don't set it okay so this is the skeleton so so far you understood this the location of for uh, of uh, configuration file for the splunk guys yeah okay now the the question is what should be the content of the configuration file that is important so guys here the content of the configuration file which has a stanza we call it stanza actually so now what is a stanza so stanza which is something like a, like a, some header stanza header and inside the content will be having key is equal to value this is the stanza now this stanzas you will be having in the configuration file so look at the right side there's a stanza header key and value key and value like that you have it so in the each configuration file okay whatever it is under the system and default uh, local and default you will be having in this format so we call it stanza in configuration file so stanza header and attributes of that particular header which includes key is equal to value you see that here so yes this is a based on stanza and we call it sometimes section also now look at this here one example of it so here one of the example of the output.conf is one of the configuration file which can be under the default or local of that user system or app okay now here the tcp out colon splunk underscore indexer is a header of a stanza we can call it a section also if you want it 
and then the key is equal to value server is equal to values which has been given so like that you can declare the output dot con okay guys now configuration file okay, in um, the default directory yeah one query can you go, go back to the previous slide yeah yeah so here correct me if i'm wrong my understanding is correct or not so we are sending the data to server 192.168.1.45 via port 997 and what we are sending is i mean the sending the data to one splunk indexer is that right uh actually yes uh, something like this so right now i'm teaching you the configuration but okay. in to make you things understanding here uh there's a there's a call forwarder has a concept of input and output okay mm -hmm. so take input yeah. from the different different sources and give mm -hmm. the uh, send it to the output which basically in that mm -hmm. indexer so here mm -hmm. in this case the output file i have not shown you the input file because i'm not teaching you the distributed uh, setup of splunk which is the next topic okay oh, okay so mm, after okay. this topic i'll talk about but for your information okay. yes this is output but input is missing here right now input.conf oh. is missing mm, okay yeah sure thanks yeah so here uh, so guys configuration file in the default directories come with a splunk and have a default setting which i said stated already a specific changes understand that default setting will come along with the splunk itself now any changes you want specific changes where should you make it you should not touch the default understand you should refer the default but you should not touch the default okay so any specific changes configuration should be made in the local directory it can be a system level system local or user app name and local or app name and uh, apps app name and then a local you should make it that configuration changes in that particular directory local directory not in the default setup okay so you should avoid changing anything in the default because this is a system setup default setup okay so now uh, when you start a splunk configuration file are merged into the single runtime model yeah this is a very important statement so because you store you declare the configuration file uh, multiple places system apps and user places so whenever you start the splunk okay uh, so you, there's all these configuration file merged together depends on their pre precedents and priorities and create a one particular common configuration file during the runtime okay so now the question is okay the, then what would, what happens when there is a you know, duplicate standards right stanzas so duplicates so if there is no duplicate stanza the resulting runtime model is the union of all files understand that union of all files okay but most of the time many times you'll have a conflict because you will declare the same keys and the same stanzas in one file and at the system level and same keys and same stanzas you declare at the app level different one user level different one so there's a conflict so in that conflict again setting with the highest precedent is used now you need to know okay the same if it is if there's a conflict which is having the highest precedence okay so understand that during the runtime it merge into the single runtime model whereas if there's a conflict it uses the highest precedence okay so now look at this which is having the highest precedence look at this in a very simple way i'll uh, complicate this flow a little bit later so highest precedence where we have uh, look system local has a highest precedence whereas the second highest is app local then third app default and then system default that means system default has a least priorities least precedent okay so that way you can understand so anything which is set in the system default and you can override through app default or app install app local or uh, uh, system local okay uh, so guys uh, did you understand that when there is a conflict in the configuration file what are the are the high level precedents which get applied while merging the configuration file yeah okay. now, let's get a bit complicated so guys here you see here in the one file look at this very carefully uh, there is one etc system local input.com this is input.com content okay so here taking the input from the one file test.txt okay that's one of the strangers which you have second stranger you have right side uh, apps etc apps apps name and local and input okay so what will happen while running the uh, run which is having highest precedent tell me in this uh, whether it's a system local or apps system local app system, right you see here apps apps name because system local has the highest precedence. 
apps local is having lower specific in the system so here what will happen system local will be used now that uh, the source type is equal to app and source type is equal to system so where is that because of the precedence is high to the left side system local uh, the merge stanza during the runtime will be having uh, monitor use a local test source type is equal to system and host is equal to user host okay so this is the merging it happens during the runtime now the question you must be having in your mind okay fine what are the configuration files you may have okay so guys the configuration the list of configuration files are pretty huge at what you can have it okay huge huge list you have more than i think 60 or 70 files are there for different different reasons but some of the important files which you can have it is these are okay input.conf output.conf props.conf limit.conf transform.conf deployment client.conf server class.conf indexes.conf and authorize.conf and server.conf so now these are the important one though you have so many other configuration files also i'll show the list of it but again these are not priority for time being so what is the input.conf it's uh, it states so basically input.conf will help you to define the data inputs when i say data inputs I mean that means uh, the splunk should take the data from where do when i say data means log okay event records whatever it is transaction matrices all these data should be taken from somewhere right so who's responsible for it so you the file which is input.conf which is responsible for this now many times what happens uh, you receive the data from the somewhere and you want to send it to not to store it in yourself you want to send it somewhere else for storage okay so what to do so which file to declare so in that case you can use the output.conf output.conf basically define the forwarding behavior now what uh, I'll, I'll just show you this is the next topic actually forwarders and all but output.conf is for the forwarding behavior now props.conf basically it defines the indexing properties configuration index how it should be indexed custom source type rules and more okay so rules and all you can define in the props.conf now limit.com define the various limit for the search command what happens uh, when you do the searches uh, more or less we have done the not very long searches but sometimes what happens you do the very long searches very deep dive searches so because of that you, you consume lots of cpu right and you had a very li little database today but in future you have a huge amount of database and same time your queries will be much more uh, larger you keep pipe 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 and multiple type pipe you do that to get the desired results so how can you limit that so your system not should not stuck so all these uh, limits for the search command which you can declare in the limits.com okay there's a multiple examples you can see in the default you can you want if you want to check you can check it out but all these limits you can do that now guys uh, many times you when you input the data logs then how it should be transformed which is call it a parsing actually how it should transform like uh, you you take the data in the logs format now how we should be creating the field and parsing processing and storing in the so all these rules where can you have it so field extraction remember field extraction which one option we had it in the left side of spunk that is also one of the way to buoy you to change that uh, transform.com but again here also if you think okay i am not going to do anything with the gui let me do through the stanzas only so you can also do that uh, creating a field and uh, passing and all stuff like that you can do through the transform.com okay now deployment client.com now what is a deployment client so guys uh, there is a two concept which we have a deployment server and deployment client okay so for time being i have not i have not discussed about what is a deployment server and what is a deployment client but actually in just uh, 30 minutes of time frame i'll discuss what is a server and client so those properties you can modify through these two files server server class.com for the server and deployment client.com for the deployment client now any indexes which you want to set it up through not gui but through properties file you can set a indexes okay so here in the indexes.com uh, anything you write uh, rules users access and all you set it in the authorized.com and server detail server detail of configuration server details goes to the server.com so these are the important file not the all file understand that 
now let me show you some of this stuff uh, so you'll understand this so here i want to show you some of the things which is called index.com because you have multiple index already so index.com so let me show you first go to here i'll go to the etc system here you have a one setup will be default and here index see here here you have many stanzas <clears throat> See all these setups is being used. This is the one stanzas section key value. Whereas here directly you put the keys and values. Okay. Okay. Directly. Now let me show you here. You see which are the path you want to change anything. See here. You want to change this one history summary internal db is here okay audit db uh, audit index is here logger inspection db is here um, index telemetry messages are here and like that okay let me show you one more uh input dot uh, limits dot let me show you the limits which define the search limit see here stanza in value default stanza in value so your memory uses is 200 mb so if it is required more for the logger query you have to increase this okay so these are the stanzas and see the hell lot of lists are there these are default setup so yep you can change any of this thing if you want do, do not do not check change this one you can same variables you can add it somewhere in the local and this file you can create a file if, if it's not exist and you can add it okay so this is the way you can do that so guys these are the important file now so yes context is a global app or user and current peer configuration context so when you set the configuration at the global level so mostly in used for uh, mostly in used uh, mostly in uh, index time processing and does not depend on user app and user but when you set the exactly uh, mostly in the search time processing okay so whenever you declare in configuration remember index time processing i discussed and i taught you search time processing also and uh, cluster peer configuration context also so here now which are the files you may have so look at this these are the different different files which you may have other than the one which i showed you last time last slides so this is the one okay complete list of splunk configuration file is located at this place you can check it out later for the video. okay so now precedence order within app or user context so if you want to know the precedence order within an app or user context what will be there so system not i'm talking the system but within an app or user context okay so here the user directive for current user inside that app directory for currently running application which includes local and followed by default and here uh just a second let me see some messages are there uh anjali okay yeah anjali uh, let me pause this this conference will now be recorded yeah so here we were discussing about the precedence order within uh, apps and user context so what happens when uh, there is a configuration which uh, you want to change so here user directories uh, for the current users app directories for the currently running app for local and followed by default then highest priority uh, lesser priorities like app directory for all other apps local followed by the default and system directories local followed by default so yeah so user has a <coughs> i'm sorry so user has a highest precedence whereas system directories like local
To get our channel membership, click on to the join button, select the 399 plan and grow your skills immensely. And default has a least priorities. Understand this. So if you want to see in the uh, distributed setup, uh, this is a precedence which is followed. Now, when I say distributed setup, we have not set up the distributed setup so far. We'll do that in some time. Okay, so slave app local directory, system local directory, app local directory, slave app default directory, app default directory, and system default directory. So this is in the in terms of distributed set of priorities. Now the question is how app directory, how app directory names affect the precedence that's the question so is there any possibility where the, you name that app directory and in the different different app you store the different different priorities a different different configuration file so will it impact that uh, uh, different different app uh, naming convention yes that's true so to determine the priority among the collections of app directory a uh, splunk uses asaki sort order okay so that is important so files in in an app directory named a have a highest priority than files in an app directory named b okay so for example let me go to the app directory and here apps here so many apps here so if you store something here same values and you store something here in this here so alert log event will have a highest priority than compared to this understand that okay now there's one more rules get added here okay uh, so also uh, third line please read this also all apps starting with an uppercase letter understand that all apps starting with an uppercase case letter have a precedence over any app starting with a lowercase letter for example here you see here this as this as has a more precedence than all of this okay whereas a has more precedent with user or legacy like that okay so it's, it's like this so yeah also all app starting with an uppercase letter have a have a precedence over any app starting with a lowercase letter due to due to ascii short order whereas a has precedence over z but z like capital letter has precedent over a for example understand that this uh, precedence in the within app directory and configuration file yeah yes yeah now so in short if you have a this app directory you see here here my app as having more priorities than my app apple or my apple in the etc etc app so this way you can see that lower and higher okay so now this is the configuration file so now the question is okay fine you found out okay how can i change the splunk behavior and configuration file which are the locations where we store this where uh, how the precedence is get applied precedence and order and uh, some of the configuration file importance of some of the configuration file now we're going to learn where and all you can use it so let's get started so i'm going to show you this so now we'll do some of the changes management change management to a configuration file in setting up the enterprise planners so guys so far what we have done we have learned the standalone plunk installations which was very easy to do that though you should have everyone should be having the standalone installation for fast learning because in this plunk it's all about everything is about the queries what you write okay it's important than anything else but apart from that we should also understand how can we use plunk in the enterprise environment because that is also important. So now let's try to understand splunking in an enterprise environment. So here, what we are going to learn as part of this discussion. So as part of these discussions, we are going to learn the different forwarding options 
we are going to understand the enterprise architecture also also walk through setting up the universal forwarder heavy forwarder deployment server and deployment client so these are the things we are going to address as part of this discussion let's focus on it so here some of the terminologies which we have already understood in the first session but i'll just repeat with a different context so we have typically in the enterprise bank we have indexes search head universal forwarder have you forwarder deployment server and deployment component. now let's deep dive into that so look at this here these are the component when i say enterprise bank then indexer search head, deployment server license manager have you forwarder cluster master search head cluster and deploy so many components are there okay so right now i'll just get you familiar with the most of the component and then we'll set up a basic enterprise slump distributed setup so here look at this these are the five primary roles in the enterprise bank you get it look at this and look at the arrow also is very important to understand that so here you see here indexer is the place where all the storage is available all the indexes are available so search head will always search the indexer okay now who will send the information in the indexer uh, logs events data and all who will send that so forwarder will send it so forwarder will send the data to the indexer now they are not one forwarder understand that they are not one forwarder there are hundreds of forwarder so I'll tell you in a simple way, there are hundreds of forwarder and each forwarder you want to change some configurations of it. So how do you change it? Okay, the forwarders are 100. It can be 500, 600, 1000, depends on the number of machines. From there you log, you are fetching the log. So forwarders will be having numbers of 100. How do you configure those server? When I say configure those server, basically modifying their configuration files, installing some apps, changing the some of the behavior of it how can you do that hundred of forwarder changes in a one go so for that we have a deployment server let me tell you here you can also use a ansible puppet as chef also there's no problem if you know ansible or puppet or chef you can also use those stuff also that's not a issue here but yeah typically we use the deployment server which is given by uh, Splunk itself so that's a Splunk server. So Splunk uh, deployment server will manage the configuration deployment to the hundreds of forwarder, multiple forwarder, and forwarder which get the logs and feed into the index. Now, what is a license manager? And you see, a license manager is at an index because you know that Splunk only apply the uh, Splunk is a paid software, and more than 500 MB of tap is there. That means you can index every every day at max 500 MB. More than that, if you want to index, then you have to get a license. Now, because of that, license need to be applied on the indexer only because that's where the indexing is happening. So here, license master will make sure that license master typically you can have in another server to make sure that it gives you the ability to uh, set the capacity of the indexing. Okay, so that way you can do that. So altogether, these are the five important components which you have: search head, indexer, forwarder, deployment server, license master. Are you comfortable with this? Yeah, Rajesh. So let's move on. So guys, these are the main component. Okay. So Splunk is comprised of three main processing components. Now one is indexer, another one is search head, and third one is forwarder so now let's look at this so what is indexer so you know that your indexer processes machine data different different type of machine data different different source of machine data and storing the results in the in the indexes as event okay as event it can be a matrices also but right now we are not talking the matrices so as an event enabling fast searches and analysis okay so see here as per the image the data is coming from the raw data indexes is stored and then that's called that process being called indexing now as the indexer indexes data it creates a number of file organized in set of directory 
by age and that's we call it a bucket okay i think we discussed first day also so please read one more time as the indexer indexes data it creates a number of files organized in a set of directory by age and these buckets we call it a bucket and these bucket may contain the raw data or the raw indexes point to the raw data also point to the raw data or raw data both okay so this is one so that's the indexes now what is a splunk component search head search head so search head look at the image first okay search head is heading to the indexer arrow look at this heading to the indexer because indexer is the having the parse content so here search head allows user to use the search language to search the indexed data okay again search head helps you to distribute user searches request to the indexer so sometimes one search head is not sufficient for all the searches for the different different user so you may have a search head multiple so you can distribute the search request to the indexer now search has consolidated the results and extract fields value pairs from the event to the user now knowledge object on the search head can be created to extract additional fields and transform the data without changing the underlying index data this is important so when you want to extract some additional field from the data so you have to create a knowledge object okay that knowledge object you can declare in the transform.conf file if you remember okay but where where it should be declared so you have to declare in the search head okay so without changing the index underlying data okay now search head also provide tool to enhance the search experience such as reports dashboard and visualization which you have already experienced it what is the reports how to create a dashboard and visualization so we have already experienced it so you know that it's done on the search head okay so overall yes third component which we have is forwarder guys what is a forwarder now so here splunk enterprise instance that consume and send data to the index is called forwarder okay so it's one of the instance where you install the splunk enterprise also and that consume the data take the input data from some point some places and send the data to index to storage after the passing again forwarder required minimum resources minimal resources and have a little impact on performance also okay now forwarders typically reside on the machines where the data originates typically understand that the host machine where the data originates where the data is being created log is being created you should install the forwarders at that place only okay so primary way data is supplied for indexing so here web server with the forward instance installed send to the send the data to first they parse it fails this that and also with the and then put it in an index okay so this is the third component forward now apart from that we do have a deployment server which i discussed you can cluster the master also license master and many more components. okay so now after understanding the component of enterprise splunk how to deploy the enterprise plan what are the strategies you should follow so here this is called deployment strategy okay so here typically when you create a deployment strategy you will talk about the input parsing indexing and search so look at this image very carefully input parsing indexing and search whereas indexer can act like input and indexing both forwarder can act like input and parsing both where the search can only do the searching whereas the indexer can act for the indexing see that so here these are the different deployment model and roles and response responsibility you can understand so in short indexer can perform input and parsing both forwarder can perform input and parsing both whereas indexer can index also where search head can be doing only search so depends on the rules and responsibility you can decide what you want so yes 
data pipeline has a four components input parsing indexing and searching how do you deploy how do you set up a deployment model is up to you now typically we use the single server which is called standalone which you have used it from last storage okay so here in a single server all these function which include input parsing indexing and searching is already available so which you call it a single server all function in a single instance of Splunk. this is basically used for the testing proof of concept personal use and learning purpose okay so recommendation is like at least you should be having one standalone Splunk instance so you can always do some sort of test development stuff and all sort of that. okay so that's a single now if you want to deploy the more than standalone then you have to go for the basic in a basic what you have you have one splunk server and one forwarder whereas splunk server is acting for similar to the server the standalone configuration manage deployment forward configurations also but whereas the input is not done by the server input is got separate you see here so server is taking place of the forwarder management parsing indexing and search okay whereas forwarder is separately set up for the input okay so here forwarder forward the uh, forwarders collect the data and send to the spec server install forward at the data source usually production server so here what it should be the capacity of the basic deployment for the for organization so this is just for not for learning purposes for the real deployment indexing should not be having you should set up the this basic model where indexing is less than 20 gb per day so if you have indexing the data amount is 20 gb per day so you should go for you should go for um, basic deployment model this means you should set up one server and one forwarder depends on the number of forward you can set it up depends on number of uh data which are indexing per day okay with this <clears throat> you can consume <clears throat> up to the 20 users <clears throat> and a small amount of forward you can say I mean, let's say 5 10 15 20 whatever it is small amount. so if you want to deploy the basic one this is the prerequisite guys everyone have understood this a deployment of splunk enterprise yeah okay now if you want to go for the higher configuration then you should try multi instance okay when i say multi instance that means search head you have to set up in separate indexers you have to set up in separate forwarders you have to set up in separate so see here forwarders it will be in the different different machines for the input indexer such as search peer okay will be performing two activity indexing and parsing will be having the multiple machines and searching from the search it so basically here it increases the indexing and searching capacity okay so if you have a, a more than 100 users and several hundred forwarders are there so it's go and if you have a data indexing you are doing up to the 100 gb per day then i think you should go for this model deployment multi instance model so here you can set the search management and index functions are split across the multiple machines so this is a recommended way to set up now if you want to increase the capacity it depends on the again uh, your requirement adding a search head cluster service more users for increased ca search capacity allow users and searches to share resources coordinate activities to handle search and request distribute the request across the set of units so if you have a more requirement for the searches more users are there so you can keep increasing the cluster head site from one to multiple uh, indexer also to multiple forwarder also multiple and they're storing this one so yes you can create a kind of model okay in fact you can create not only the search head cluster understand that search head cluster search it cluster means uh, you are creating a three clusters at least one is available all the time but you can also create a index cluster for ha high availability high availabilities and scalability so data should not be lost so 
so far whatever we discussed there's some pros cons we had so if you want to configure the uh, indexer for replicating the data with each other you want to prevent the data losses promote availability manage multiple indexes then you should try index clustering okay so non replicate replicating index clustering which is offer simplified management do not provide availability or data recoveries so you can go for the indexing uh, search it cluster also and index cluster also you can do that now <clears throat> just quick round here on the deep deployment strategies the deep dive so let's look at this here so standalone deployments we have understood we have used it also standalone deployment in a splunk means that all the functions that splunk does are ma managed by single instance various function that standalone deployment can do are searching indexing parsing and hold the knowledge objects okay such as reporting or letting dashboard now when you should use this deployment for the learning purpose a limited number of users limited limited number of indexing is available stuff like that some of the pros and cons for this type of deployment is you see here in terms of supportability very easy to manage and support as it has a only one instance and high availability no disaster recovery no search concurrency no that's the okay not applicable so you won't have it actually whereas in terms of su supportability cons not applicable but here here no ha no disaster recovery and all this thing you get now when you set up a distributed de deployment there are few drawbacks of the standalone deployment so for that we have to come up the de distributed deployment okay so here if you look at this functions okay so forwarder sent to the index indexes sent to the search head now so there are some some pros and cons also available for this so look at this here so here in this model in this model where you have a one indexer multiple forwarder and search head so here what is the thing so in terms of uh, hello Rajesh, uh, i'm actually yeah. not able to hear anything uh is it for everyone guys no Rajesh, we are able hello, to check. Rajesh. yeah hello. i am able to uh, check uh, if there's some issues or some network issues from your side. Am I audible? Can you just uh, yeah, respond on chat, please? I can hear you very well. Yeah, we'll be able to hear Rajesh. Okay, so these are the pros and cons for this type of deployment. Okay, so uh, in terms of support supportability. Uh, if you go for that so it's easy to support as the components are separated out in different function and cons not applicable high availability no disaster recovery no search concurrency yes here you have it but in cons here single point of failure in terms of high availability if the indexer goes down then indexes stop okay and disaster recovery single point of failures also so these are some of the pros and cons which we have for the disk deployment model now to overcome this one you set up a clustered one cluster deployment so you set up a search cluster also index cluster also in this case you get everything look at this image very carefully uh, look at this image very carefully so this is a clustered deployment okay in the clustered deployment what are you having multiple search heads are there okay multiple search head now how can you hit the one of the search head through the load balancer load balancer you set it up so you hit the load balancer load balancer pass this request to the search head okay now through the search head you run the queries and now this queries is not run on the one machine one indexer it runs on the multiple uh, indexing cluster which is called a peer nodes okay so if you see here in the search head cluster also there's a one captain and the remaining are member cluster by the way all are member cluster but one will act like a captain in the index the indexing clusters you have a one master node and then all the data is being stored in the uh, the peer nodes section so now the all the search head will send the data to the one of the peer nodes and decide where to do the searches so that way load balances happen scalability high availability also happens 
and after that you forward it, send the data to the indexers again forward and send the data to the load balancing through the index that way and replication because it's a index is cluster so replication of the data is happening also so this is the this is the one of the uh, best way to set up a cluster if you have a more than thousands of queries running every time uh, hundreds of users are there big big reports you are generating so this way it's a very good setup now yeah that's a cluster deployment here so in the above deployment the indexes are in a cluster there's something called master node which we have seen that uh, the master node and cluster master manage the indexer and replicates the data across the multiple indexer this creates more than one copy of data across the deployment giving a user ha of the data so what is the master node function so master node functions which includes manages the configuration app manage the configuration app uh, across all the peer nodes indexer manages incoming search request for the search node knows all the copies of the data that index and replicates if any indexer goes out of the service whereas what is the search head function capital function manage the search load coming from in and from user delegate search job coming in from different search head members and replicate the knowledge bundles across the search head load so what is the advantage pros and cons so you see here here in this you have only pros here no disaster recovery is the cluster deployment so that's why okay so depends on which model you want to deploy uh, you want to go for single standalone which you have used it distributed deployment this is the basic to begin with cluster deployment and so okay so guys these are the deployment model which we have so guys, did you understand that before talking about the forwarders yes um one query actually here so correct me if my understanding is wrong so for example um regarding the um, cluster indexers um, the forward even though we have multiple forwarders the forwarders would be sending data to for example if it sends the data to one indexer node so the master indexer what it will do is it will uh, replicate that indexer data across all the indexer nodes correct correct so yeah, yeah it, in that way the forwarder doesn't have to send the data to all the indexer nodes it will send data only to one indexer node if uh, which is yeah. configured for that to do right so yeah. so the data we will have in the indexer node okay then if any user searches the search would be um, load balanced across these I mean, I mean multiple searches you uh, with the help of the search head captain so um, the search head would be gathering the information from the um, indexers based on the master nodes um, data, right? I mean the yeah. control. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay, fine. Yeah, thank you. So when you say see here, uh, when you say cluster itself, so far we were discussing one node indexer, one node search head, and uh, multiple forward. When when you say indexer cluster, cluster the definition of the cluster itself they have become a master and peer nodes. Okay. Uh, something like elastic search if you have used it okay uh, so something like that so it, because it's a cluster so cluster has to have a master node and a peer nodes same way search it cluster also have a captain and the members node a member cluster so like that uh, all these things uh, cluster head search head is been balanced by load balancer whereas master node is responsible for the data, data replication and same time sending the request to the uh, member nodes peer nodes okay so that is the responsibility of this okay if if that captain goes down so what will happen so other two i mean one of the other two members will become automatically captain or how uh, yeah yeah so while setting up the captain you can also say this is the primary captain secondary captain like that so those are possible okay 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 got it yeah thanks okay guys so these are the now let's talk about the forwarder so we have a little bit understood about the forwarder here now what is a forwarder so forwarder is a instance instance of splunk that send data to another instance of splunk okay that's a simple thing instance of splunk yeah forwarder is an instance of splunk that send the data to the another instance of splunk now 
what types of data forwarder sends it types of forwarder data so guys uh, forwarder typically <clears throat> work with three kind of data three types of data raw data unpassed data and passed data so when you say forwarder raw data so the data as is suggested name suggested data which is as it is simple it is no conversion before sending to the tcp raw is not at all touched by splunk yes so this data is not at all touched by the splunk usually only used for forwarding syslog to non splunk system okay that's called raw data <clears throat> there's one more type of forwarding data which is forwarded is forward forwarding which is called unpassed data so unpassed cook data is a raw data that has been enhanced to get our channel membership the click on to the join button select the 3d line plan and grow your skills immensely when i say splunk specific information that means minimum uh, minimal passing which splunk do that is to add host name destination index source type and source which you know that while uploading you also have selected this thing so this is the minimum setup okay so these pieces of info are sometimes called keys okay so common thing about these pieces of the data is that they apply to the source input as a whole and do not vary with an individual event in fact the in fact in past data individual event do not have even necessarily been identified that's called past data and past data now past data is basically past and cooked data that had each individual event examined and annotated with the keys plus new fields and new key values that may be different in each individual event okay so this has been transformed properly the raw data has been broken down into separate line the lines may be may have been red merge into the multi line events resulting in the events read by the transform processor transform.conf which create a parse search so you can do apply this transform.conf file in the search here also you can apply in the uh, indexer also so this is the third kind of data types of data now so now unpassed data which has been processed unpassed data which has been processed by universal forwarder where is the parsed data which is been processed by heavy forwarder mind it parsed data if you want it has to be processed through heavy forwarder and unpassed data it can be used for the universal forwarder also so now these are the types of forwarded data so in short there are two kind of forwarder in splunk there are two kind of forwarder universal forwarder heavy forwarder what are the difference see it here Universal forwarder process the unpassed data. Have you forwarded? Pass the passed data. Okay, guys, are you getting this idea? Yeah, yes, Rajesh. Okay, so now let's deep dive into the universal forwarder and have you forwarded. Okay, so guys, this is the difference between universal forwarder and have you forwarded. Universal forwarder is a, just a, like a light agent. Okay, it's a small software, it's not a Full blown Splunk Enterprise instance, whereas Heavy Forwarder is a full Splunk Enterprise instance. The one which you installed it is like that. Okay. Universal Forwarder has a limited passing of data, whereas Heavy Forwarder is passing the data at the event level also. Here, no event routing is happening, whereas Heavy Forwarder has an event routing available. Universal Forwarder, do you have a no alerts? But heavy forwarder you have alerts but it got disabled actually okay universal forwarder you have no indexing heavy forwarder can do the indexing universal forwarder you can configure through the cli understand that whereas heavy forwarder you can configure through web and cli web the one which you experience already okay so this is a common differences between universal forwarder and heavy forwarder let's look at more look at this here so again splunk enterprise instance footprint memory cpu load bundle python pre event filtering event routing event passing local indexing searching and alerting and search web whereas it says no yes no yes optional and also like that okay so these are the difference which we have major difference which we have between the universal forwarder 
and have you forward it depends upon your requirement you set it up all this stuff am i making sense now yeah any questions guys anyone has so far yeah but where the universal forwarder is used because so heavy forwarder for has all the yeah yeah, yeah please proceed yeah universal forwarder is weak because of the lightweight small and stuff like that so most of the server where see most of the production server where you are running the applications right uh, so from there that uh, universal forward will send the data take the input data from those, those files matrices and all and send to the in heavy forwarder or uh, your indexer so let's say your production is running on 100 machines and you want to capture all the events logs all and stuff like that so you will set up a uh, universal forward not a heavy forward because if you set up a heavy forward it will consume so much of memory and so much of resources of your production boxes that is not good right so yeah got it way. okay then so it will then not run all the all the time straight universal forwarder uh, what you said sir uh, universal forwarder always can this machine or uh, based upon schedule it will run ah uh, no 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 universal uh, forwarder once you set up you start running the depends on the logs update automatically real time almost real time it will take almost the input real, real. and send that to our yeah. it depends that on the like how much Please proceed, please proceed. Yeah, so the input the moment, let's say there's one file, let's say there's one production back box app server, and there is your file called Apache log file. So the moment it gets modified, Universal Forward will take the data and will not parse it because it has a limited capability and send to Happy Forwarder or Indexer, which has all the features of parsing and uh, processing, transformer. Okay, so one question so in the Universal Forwarder, so how frequently it it can pick up the data from the logs would be set up in inputs.conf right that frequency that we yeah. can change yeah, yeah. okay inputs. so mm. yeah and right. uh, so you, you do not mm. set it up by default it's almost almost like lesser than second lesser than second i thought yeah real time it will pick up Al almost okay. real time almost yes right yeah remember okay. i did uh, remember i did uh, uh logged in wrong uh, okay okay so universal forwarder is okay so it's not going to do anything it just uh, catch and dispatch kind of activity it's going to perform but heavy yeah. forwarders uh, it has multiple you know capabilities as well right so where yeah. it would be really used actually because in the dis distributed environment we won't be having heavy forward right? because it would consume more cpu and all so yeah. where it would be actually it's um, usefulness comes into picture yeah so if you look at the architecture here, uh, let me go back to that image. Look at this, sometime what happens, uh, the searches happen in the indexed cluster, I mean, uh, uh, index uh, machine, okay. So you send the searches and you send it to the index machine. Search is not happening in the head, search is happening in the indexed uh, machine. So sometimes what happens index has a multiple capability. Let me show you searching and indexing parsing. Let me show you one more. See it. See it. Four things typically we have it input parsing indexing searching. So searches happen by the search head, but actually searches happen on the index. Okay. So sometimes what happens if you do the parsing also and indexing also, it's a huge load on the uh, indexers, so indexer machines. So that the searches will be much slower. So to a speed up a searches, what you do, parsing you do through heavy forwarder, input you do through like uh, universal forwarder, and indexing you do through indexer servers and searching through the search head like that. Okay. So if you want to divide. Uh, the parsing should be separate and indexing should be separate. So in that case, you have to keep it at parsing heavy forward. Okay, got it. So it will come in between a forwarder and indexer. Yeah. So in, okay. in, a, in a simple way, input. Uh, if at the if you are managing in a very large infrastructure, input is equal to universal forwarder, 
parsing is equal to uh, heavy forwarder indexing is equal to indexer and searching is equal to searches let me tell you here here transforming is also been done at the parsing level extracting a field from the existing uh, logs and through your rules and set uh, you can set it up at the parsing level also indexing level also but if you do at the parsing level it will create a less uh, impact on the indexing server capacity and searching searches will be very fast okay yeah, thanks okay guys so there's a two kind of forward okay so now if you see here look at this image here you have a active directory it's a production server active directory server dv server web server print log server so so many servers we have running in the production and there's a slunk indexer which you can see here so you can set up a forwarder at each of the server the sender data to the splunk server in for indexing such as and visualization so for you can set it up all this thing so yes uh, there are some of the key inputs which we have for the splunk universal forwarder universal forwarder cannot search index and produce alerts with the data which you discussed universal forwarder does not pass the data understand that you cannot use it to route the data to the different splunk indexers I remember universal forwarder does not pass the data at the same time you cannot use it to the route the data to different please enroll our general membership for 399 plan to get access of all the parts along with that you can access our other tutorials such as docker ansible jenkins terraform splunk aws azure and various other devops related premium tutorials with our channel membership if you would have any issues with our channel membership you can drop an email to us at contact at devopschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video to get our channel membership click on to the join button select the 399 plan and grow your skills immensely please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries we will reply to them at the earliest thanks for watching